With the absence of the gods and magic, the Fifth Age dramatically changed the world of Dragonlance. Gaming was next. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about Dragonlance in the Saga system. I would like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel, and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. All of these titles are available as digital editions through my affiliate link. TSR's creative director, Harold Johnson, wanted to revitalize Dragonlance and bring about a complete change from Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Originally considering a rules-light version of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, he decided instead to create a storytelling game that would better capture the fictive essence of Kryn. Harold brought in the game designer William W. Connors. Around the same time, TSR contracted a Chronicles 2 trilogy from Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, which would be condensed into a single novel that dramatically changed the fate of Kryn and understanding of Dragonlance. Margaret Weiss said in an interview with this channel that the trilogy would have returned magic to Kryn if they were able to complete it. And so, with the absence of the gods and magic, Designer Sue Cook rather politely said that they were surprised at the turn of events. Cook said that it gave them an interesting jumping-off point, and that Connors took the disappearance of the gods in the novel as a challenge. Steve Miller conversely said that it was a fantastic waste of Dragonlance's potential, and stated that he worked hard to balance Fifth Age material with classic material from the setting. This forced the design team to reimagine Dragonlance without the input of the setting's creators. Jean Rabe would become the primary chronicler of the Dragonlance timeline, moving it 30 years into the future with a series of initial short stories in Dragon Magazine, then fully chronicling the Dragon Overlord era with the Dragons of a New Age trilogy. This upset fans for a number of reasons, and between the massive time jump and system change from Advanced Dungeons & Dragons to the newly developed card-based saga system, TSR faced the first real backlash from fans in Dragonlance since its creation 12 years before. The saga system was intended to be a narrative game that could better support the rich literary heritage of Dragonlance. Connors worked to minimize conventional role-playing mechanics and instead focus on the sort of free-form narrative role-playing that many people enjoyed as children. The rules for game mechanics were completely minimized, allowing the players and game master to be inventive with spells and choices. This was a trend the role-playing world was experiencing with White Wolf's properties and was a sign of the times. Dice became a thing of the past, and the Fade deck, with symbology not unlike traditional playing cards of suits and numbers, were used for action resolution and even experience levels and player health. This new time frame brought with it many new elements, including the appearance of the Legion of Steel, disappearance of the gods and clerical magic, the rulership of the dragon overlords, the affliction of the kender, and the appearance of mysticism and sorcery. Sue Cook would say about afflicted kender that their purpose was to drive home to the reader the fearsomeness of the new dragon overlords. Steve Miller, who came up with the original backstory for the Afflicted Kender, imagined that Afflicted Kender had previously popped up after the first cataclysm, but that they've faded away after a few generations, but his theory never made it into print. It was Vice President of Creative Services James Ward who said, put really big mean dragons in the game, which became the genesis of the Dragon Overlords. The saga system would continue with 15 publications, ending in February of 2000. Let's take a closer look at Dragonlance in the Saga system. Dragonlance 5th Age Dramatic Adventure Game was released in August 1996 in the form of a box set containing the Fate deck, three booklets describing the new game mechanics, the new face of the Dragonlance setting, and the first adventure in the new system called Heroes of a New Age. It also featured a large map of Ancelon showcasing the changes the Dragon Overlords had wrought. Heroes of Steel was the first splat book to be released by Skip Williams in October 1996. Each of the initial splat books would follow Gene Rabe's storylines similar to the Chronicles and original Dragonlance modules. 
Heroes of Steel would deal with the discovery of Dragonspawn and showcase the warrior roles of this new Dragonlance world, even presenting a mass combat resolution system unseen since Battle System. Heroes of Defiance by Steve Miller was released in August 1997 and took six months longer to release than planned due to TSR's bankruptcy and the insistence by Wizards of the Coast for them to complete their production plans for the coming years. Heroes of Defiance focused on rogues and provided the most detailed systems for espionage and subterfuge to date, and also continues the dramatic campaign with Storm Over Kryn. Wizards would insist on broadening the Saga system line before the next release with the standalone Fate deck and The Last Tower, the legacy of Raceland, in 1997. This gives the most detailed account of the Tower of High Sorcery in Weyrith and gives examples of tests of High Sorcery as well as an adventure for an artifact that nearly destroyed the tower. Heroes of Sorcery by Stephen Stan Brown was released in December 1997, and between The Last Tower and Heroes of Sorcery, they would detail out mages and magic in new ways. The adventure A Killing Frost would see the heroes searching for Huma's Dragonlance. Heroes of Hope by Dwayne Maxwell was released in January 1998 as the fourth splat book to define roles focusing on mystics. It contained the adventure of The Crown and the Serpent, which somewhat mirrors the final book in Jean Rabe's trilogy, but doesn't end the adventure campaign. It also featured the character of Mina for the first time, and the design team had vast plans for her. Miller also says, I was personally very disappointed in the direction she went in. I think she could have been developed more. I also disliked the way she was characterized. Another Fifth Age author, Stan Brown, counters with... Any time you collaborate with other writers, particularly ones as gifted as Margaret and Tracy, you've got to be ready to let go of your preconceptions and look at new possibilities. The Fifth Age team had a loose plan for Mina's future, but when they started developing the War of Souls with Margaret and Tracy, they realized that this character would work well in the new storyline. Together, they all helped craft this new direction for her life. Wings of Fury by Douglas Niles was released in March 1998 and concluded the Dragons of a New Age campaign. It focused on dragons and gives the most detailed history of Kryn's dragons yet. A Saga Companion by William W. Connors was released in May 1998 and presented a whole new series of rules and options for the Saga system for narrators and players alike. Citadel of Light by Steve Miller was released in July 1998 and continues the setting series in the same vein of The Last Tower, fully detailing out the Citadel and its inhabitants. The Bestiary by Stephen Stan Brown, released in September 1998, is the monster manual for Saga System and features beautiful sketches and illustrations of creatures. Its focus was on telling the story of the monsters therein. Palanthus by Stephen Stan Brown was released in December 1998 as the next setting book and changed the supplements in a few ways. It wasn't in a box, it didn't contain an adventure, and is mostly in character. It provides the most detail about the city to date. With TSR gone the way of the Dodo and Wizards of the Coast in control, they hosted a Dragonlance Summit held during a week in the winter of 1997 to 1998 in Renton, Washington, to bring back Weiss and Hickman. After two more summits, Wizards decided to return to the Chaos War and re-examine it as the authors began writing their War of Souls trilogy. Wizards saw the lack of success with the Saga system and decided to begin hedging their bets by reintroducing advanced Dungeons & Dragons to the mix of adventures. Seeds of Chaos by Douglas Niles was released in October 1998 and was a return to advanced Dungeons & Dragons, the first supplement since Unsung Heroes in 1993. It featured both advanced Dungeons & Dragons and Saga system rules and returned to their traditional adventure format. It also took the timeline back to the Chaos War and focused on Palanthus. The Sylvan Vale by William W. Connors and Miranda Horner with Stephen Kenson was released in February 1999 and is the first Battle Lines adventure. It was also written for both Advanced Dungeons & Dragons and Saga System. It centered around the Sylvanesty Shield and set up the War of Souls. It also contains the most detailed information of the Sylvanesty Forest ever written. Chaos Spawn by Douglas Niles was released in December 1999 and is the sequel adventure to Seeds of Chaos. It introduced Daemon Lords to the setting and was a bit more of a railroad adventure than its predecessor. 
Rise of the Titans by Richard Dakin was released in February 2000 and was the second and final Battlelines adventure following the Sylvan Vale. It focused on the Ogre Titans, which were originally going to play a large role in the War of Souls, but were not included in the end. It focuses on the two Ogre nations, showcasing them in full detail. On March 24, 2000, Steve Miller announced that Wizards of the Coast was ending its support of Dragonlance Fifth Age as it didn't perform as expected and that Dragonlance would not be seen for some time. In the end, Dragonlance Fifth Age lasted from August 8, 1996 to March 24, 2000. But that is all the time I have to talk about Dragonlance and the Saga system. What do you think of the Saga system? Have you ever played Dragonlance Fifth Age Dramatic Adventure game? Leave a comment below. I'd like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, ours is an age of change, that much is certain. Whether it will end in disaster or in a new glorious renewal of our land, no one knows.